Uh, just recently, I spoke with the President of the United States. I've also been in communication with the Mayor of Baltimore, with the uh, President of the Maryland Senate and the Speaker of the House. We're here in our Emergency Operations Command Center, which has now been activated. Um, all state agencies are actively engaged in this situation. We've partnered with uh, Baltimore City and all other agencies in Maryland, as well as neighboring states. This evening, as a result of the serious violence and looting, which has led to the destruction of property and put innocent Marylanders at significant risk, I have declared a state of the emergency at the request of Baltimore City. This order deploys the Maryland National Guard uh, in order to help restore order and to end uh, the unrest that we witnessed today and tonight. I have not made this decision lightly. The National Guard represents a last resort in order to restore order. Look, people have the right to pro protest and express their frustration, but Baltimore City families deserve peace and safety in their communities. And these acts of violence and destruction of property cannot and will not be tolerated. I strongly condemn the actions of those who engaged in direct attacks against innocent civilians, businesses, and law enforcement officers. The resources of the State Police and the National Guard have already been deployed in support of all law enforcement in the city. They will exercise discipline restraint and provide the support necessary to ensure safety and to bring law and order to Baltimore City. Um, we've got our entire team here. I'm going to turn the podium over here for a moment to Colonel William Palazzi, who's the superintendent of our state police. And then uh, we will hear from General uh, Linda Singh, and uh, who's the uh, adjutant general of the Maryland National Guard, and also uh, Clay Stamp, who is the d director of the Maryland Emergency Management Agency, where we are here tonight. So I'm going to start now with uh, Colonel Palazzi of the State Police, and then we'll be happy to take your questions after everybody has spoken. Thank you. Good evening. As the governor said, um, I'm Colonel William Palazzi, superintendent of the State Police. Um, and the governor's actions today are huge. Uh, we have been here, along with uh, many of our allied uh, law enforcement, over 500 strong, um, since Wednesday, working with the city of Baltimore um, in various capacities, helping to maintain as much order as possible. Um, as you've seen, many groups continue to splinter and move around the city of Baltimore, um, looting, you know, cre um, committing crimes in certain areas, setting places on fire. Um, our mission has been and will continue to be the preservation of life and the preservation of property. Um, I have had conversations this evening with Commissioner Batts. Um, he certainly understands the scope of what has happened and that we're coming in with additional forces to assist. Uh, the governor's statement of um, or de declaration of the emergency uh, order is big and that it allows us to branch out even further. Um, we've already put out a request for up to 500 additional law enforcement from the state of Maryland regionally to come out and provide assistance, um, but through an EMAC request, which um, the MEMOP director will talk about in a little bit, uh, we're putting out a request for up to 5,000 law enforcement from the regional area um, in the mid-Atlantic to assist us as well. We are asking that they be equipped uh, with the necessary equipment for their own personal safety, um, as well as to assist us in deploying things. Um, you know, kind of a plan at, in the next few hours is to be work with other local law enforcement leaders, to kind of divide up the city into certain sectors, on which we will then go sector by sector trying to protect, starting ideally with the hottest areas first, which we're waiting for that briefing from BPD um, right now and then work in concert with the National Guard as they come on board to maintain security of those areas. This time, it's all I have. Thank you, Colonel. Now we're going to turn the floor over to Clay Stamp, who is the director of the Maryland Emergency Management Agency. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the governor has been clear uh, from day one. We uh, activated this past Saturday in his direction 
to integrate our actions with the city of Baltimore as they dealt with this situation. Um, we've had over three, uh, over 400 state policing agencies in the city working with them. Uh, today turned another chapter, and as the governor said, he declared a state of emergency. This was done after the mayor of Baltimore declared a state of emergency. That means that they've exceeded their capability, and they actually need help from the state of Maryland to move in and to support their, uh, their efforts to curb the situation. What you see here is a full court press. You see um, representatives from organizations across the state agency, as well as volunteer organizations that are bringing the full, uh, full weight of the state government to deliver resources to achieve the governor's goals, which are clear. We will be working diligently in our different sections that are activated, transportation support, law enforcement, health and medical, human services, and through planning, logistics, and operations, we will achieve the necessary results we need to achieve, again, the governor's directive. Um, I'll turn it over to uh, Governor Hogan again. Thank you, sir. Uh, lastly, before we take your questions, um, we're going to turn the podium over here to General L Linda Singh, who is the Adjutant General of the Maryland Guard. Thank you, Governor. Um, as the governor mentioned, uh, the Maryland Guard is actually going to be out in activation this evening. And what you need to understand is that he has access to our full complement that's here within the state, which means up to about 5,000 troops that can be put onto uh, the streets to actually protect uh, property and people. I would highly recommend that we all go in and, get, and take uh, cover for the night and actually go to sleep and uh, get some rest and let things settle down so that we can restore order to the city. Uh, we are going to be out in, in massive force, and that just basically means that we are going to be patrolling the streets and out to ensure that we're protecting property. We are in a supporting mode, so if there are any questions about martial law, this is not martial law. Martial law means that at that point the military fully takes over, so we are not at that point. I repeat, not at that point. We are in support of the police department, and we will be taking our direction from the police department as in where we're going to go out and support. Thank you. At this time, we'd all be happy to take any questions that anyone might have. Any questions? Well, I'll, um, I, I, I've heard about some of the officers who have been injured. I haven't heard the exact medical uh, status, but is there anybody else that can address that? I don't think you probably have more up-to-date information than we do. I can tell you that uh, the last report I had were seven police officers were injured. Um, it's uh, something, as I said earlier, that won't be tolerated. It was one of the factors in uh, us deciding we had to get in there and provide some support, I can tell you that. But we'll, we'll, we'll let you know as soon as we – does anybody here have any other updated information on the health? We'll try to get you the answer. Well, the, uh, the city has asked for us to take over. Um, currently, uh, the state police superintendent, Bill Palazzi, is in charge. Uh, we'll be in direct communication with the city, with the mayor, uh, with um, the city police, and uh, General Singh will be um, providing backup assistance to the state police. We'll be coordinating the police from other counties around the state and from the other uh, police that we get in from around other states in the region. Um, we uh, declared the state of emergency and I issued the executive order less than 30 seconds after requested by the city of Baltimore. So it didn't take us very long at all. I, uh, I signed an executive order almost immediately as soon as we received the call and then called the president. There was no delay whatsoever. We've had this emergency operations center activated since Saturday. Uh, we've had hundreds of state police on the ground. We've had every single state agency and local agency coordinated out of this operation already for the entire week. I've been in daily communication with the mayor uh, and others in the city, and our entire team has been involved from day one. But frankly, this is a Baltimore City situation. Baltimore City was in charge. When the mayor called me, uh, which quite frankly we were glad that she finally did, uh, is instantly we uh, signed the executive order. Uh, we, were, we already had our entire team prepared. 
In fact, I'd already called uh, General Singh earlier in the day and asked her to get prepared to be called up. Um, we were all in the uh, command center in the second floor of the State House uh, in constant communication, and we were trying to get in touch with the mayor for quite some time. She finally um, made that call, and we immediately took action. Governor, do you think that, that she should have gotten the call earlier? Would you have liked to have acted earlier? Look, I don't want to. I know that uh, the city has done everything in their power to get this under control. Um, I don't want to question uh, what they've been doing. They're all they're all under tremendous stress. We're all here on one team. Um, and I want to thank the mayor for all of her involvement. Um, we're just happy that we're all on the same page and we're all able to help each other at this point. Governor, would you agree that uh, what the motion is about is a political effort rather than a constitutional Well, um, I'll let General Singh talk about maybe whatever some of the specifics that she can. But again, the National Guard is going to provide some ass assets and be working um, as backup to the state police and the other uh, police agencies. So. Um, we're not, as she said, we haven't taken over. It's not a situation where they're going to be in charge, but we are going to roll in some assets into the city. Uh, we're going to have some equipment and some manpower that's going to help us get this situation under control. Uh, but I'll let General Singh talk about what assets they have available and what might be happening. And keep in mind that um, some assets will be readily available and we'll get down there tonight. Some of them take a while to call up and get in. So it'll be growing. Um, as we uh, bring in folks from around various counties around the state, as we call up the Guard members, uh, and as we get uh, support from other states. But we're going to get as much as we can there this evening. All right, we want to let you know what you're looking at on the uh, right hand of your screen. Baltimore City Police have sent this out. This is a big fire, uh, Federal Street near Chester and Gay. They're urging people to avoid the area. That's according to Baltimore City Police. We're trying to get more information on that fire, but that is what you're looking at. We're going to go back to the audio from the press conference. To come in when we clear an area, hold that area. Um, but we need it for everybody, for law enforcement and National Guard, uh, for it to be done as safely as possible. They need to have the proper equipment to defend themselves, um, to secure themselves from rocks and bottles and everything else that's being thrown at us. Um, that's one of the biggest requests of the National Guard from law enforcement is hold certain critical infrastructure, certain areas that we believe um, we need to hold. And that is absolutely correct. And just to add, if you really want to get into the specifics of vehicles, we are going to be coming in with up-armored UMVs, and mainly because I want to make sure that our folks are being protected, as well as uh, some pieces of larger equipment that will allow us to move more forces uh, when we need to. And we will be uh, carrying our weapons. And so because if my folks need to be able to protect themselves, they have the ability to do that, but that's only in the event that they need to do that. So I'm not going to talk about exactly where we're going to secure. It will be up to where the, the state police tells us we need to move. The goal is once we have those areas secured by police, we will come in and provide the release, the relief for them, so that they can then move on and secure other areas. Can you tell us how many guard men are on the streets right now and how many state police troopers? So we will have up to 5,000 that can be called up. It will be up to the state police and the governor to tell us exactly how many they need and at what points in time. Um, general number, I'd say around 1,500. Uh, you know, and again, we are relying on, as the city has, you know, our partners in all of this. Uh, you know, the law enforcement they can bring in that already have arrest authority and stuff like that in the state of Maryland to bring in to support things. Uh, but certainly we're looking to bring in more. I don't have a specific number for you. Right now I'd say more than I can possibly need I'd like to have. Uh, but we're bringing as many as we possibly can. Right now. Anybody else? Yes. Well, it's um, obviously very disappointing to us as Marylanders and people who love the city of Baltimore. Um, we, what started out as a peaceful protest uh, with people expressing genuine concern about an incident that took place. And, was a peaceful incident for six or s hours or so. 
I would say 95% of the people involved um, were conducting themselves in a very peaceful manner. Um, it was uh, well under control. We had a lot of outside agitators come in from around the country, and we had some uh, roving uh, gangs uh, and young people that were just out looking to cause problems. It's totally separate, I think, from some of the people who were peacefully demonstrating the other day. It's unfortunate. Um, I had a long discussion with the president about this this evening. He supports our actions 100%. Uh, we talked about the fact that we've got to find everybody believes we need to get to the answers and resolve this uh, situation, the concern everybody has about what exactly happened in the Freddie Gray incident. Uh, that's one whole situation. This is an entirely different situation. This is lawless gangs of thugs roaming the streets, causing damage uh, to property and, and injuring innocent people, and we're not going to tolerate that. Well, I mean, all of it was disturbing. It's hard to say any one thing, but when you see uh, when the law enforcement officers were hurt and injured, when police cars were on fire, uh, when uh, buildings were being set ablaze, it was, uh, it was very disturbing. And, uh, you know, we called everybody together in advance of the city uh, requesting, so we were fully ready to engage immediately. Well, um, we have no way of predicting. I can tell you this. We're going to put every available asset and as much manpower as it possibly takes uh, to get this under control as quickly as we possibly can. Um, and we're going to maintain the uh, state of emergency until it's put to rest. Can you tell us what the president had to say in your conversation? Uh, he thanked me for the action, um, said he thought we were doing the right thing. He uh, said, I assume that uh, you and your team will be exercising do restraint. I assured him that we were. The last thing we want to do is escalate the violence, uh, but I also assured him that we weren't going to stand by and allow our city of Baltimore to be taken over by thugs. And uh, he said that uh, the Justice Department was, was going to be, uh, the, the, uh, the new Attorney General would be coming into Baltimore, that we were all going to sit down and work together to try to uh, see if we can't bring calm to the community and find answers in the, in the case of Freddie Gray, uh, but that that was a separate uh, situation, that he felt uh, we absolutely needed to get control of our streets, and he uh, 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 endorsed the action that we're taking tonight. Can you say what are your avenues to the I don't know when. He didn't say when. All right. Any other last questions? Do you know when the last time a governor of Maryland had to uh, declare a state of emergency for a civil rights um, I don't believe I do know for sure, but it's probably 1968. Well, it's nowhere near as bad as that at this point. Well, we want to make sure that it doesn't get to that point. Um, you know, it's certainly the worst thing I've seen um, since I've been governor, which is only 90 days. Uh, any other questions? Thank you very much.